Good afternoon. NATO defense ministers uh, will meet this week at an important moment for transatlantic uh, security. We will review our progress on strengthening NATO's deterrence and defense. We will further increase the protection of our critical infrastructure in light of the sabotage of the North Stream pipelines. And we will step up and sustain our support for Ukraine so that we can continue, so, that, so they can continue to defend themselves and liberate territory from Russian occupation. Ukraine has the momentum and continues to make significant gains. While Russia is increasingly resorting to horrific and indiscriminate uh, attacks on civilians and uh, critical infrastructure. President Putin is failing in Ukraine. His attempted annexations, partial mobilization and reckless nuclear rhetoric represents the most significant escalation since the start of the war. And they show that this war is not going as planned. NATO is not party to the conflict, but our support is playing a key role. Allies remain united in their support for Ukraine's sovereignty and self-defense. Ukraine's defense minister, <coughs> Oleksiy Resnikov, will join us tomorrow both for the US-led contact group for Ukraine and for a dinner with NATO ministers. Together, we will address Ukraine's urgent needs. I welcome the recent announcements by allies to provide more advanced air defense systems and other capabilities to Ukraine. And I look forward to further deliveries. Our message is clear. NATO stands with Ukraine for as long as it takes. President Putin started this war. He must end it by withdrawing his forces from Ukraine. And President Lukashenko should stop the complicity of Belarus in this illegal conflict. <clears throat> On Thursday, I will chair a regular meeting of the Nuclear Planning Group. The fundamental purpose of NATO's nuclear deterrent has always been to preserve peace, prevent coercion and deter aggression. Next week, NATO will hold its long-planned deterrence exercise, Steadfast Noon. This is routine training, which happens every year to keep our deterrent safe, secure, and effective. President Putin's veiled nuclear threats are dangerous and irresponsible. Russia knows that the nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We are closely monitoring Russia's nuclear forces. We have not seen any changes in Russia's posture, but we remain vigilant. At the Madrid summit in June, NATO leaders decided a fundamental shift in our defense and deterrence to respond to the new security reality. We have doubled the number of NATO battle groups in the east of the Alliance. They can be scaled up quickly to brigade size. We're also increasing the number of our high readiness forces. At this ministerial, we will take decisions to increase our stockpiles of munitions and equipment, to speed up the delivery of capabilities, and to use the NATO defense planning process to provide industry with the long-term demand they need to boost production. We will also address the protection of critical infrastructure. NATO has been working on this for many years. And following the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines, 
we have further enhanced our vigilance across all domains. We have doubled our presence in the Baltic and North Seas to over 30 ships, supported by maritime patrol aircraft and undersea capabilities. These efforts are closely coordinated by NATO's Maritime Command. Allies are also increasing security around key installations and stepping up intelligence and intelligence sharing. We will take further steps to strengthen our resilience and protect our crit critical infrastructure. Any deliberate attack against allies' critical infrastructure would be met with a united and determined response. Our final session will focus on NATO's missions and operations from Kosovo to Iraq. We will be joined by EU High Representative Borrell because NATO and the European Union face the same security challenges. We have a difficult winter ahead, so it's even more important that North America and Europe continue to stand united in support for Ukraine and in defense of our people. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. 